All right, Boxing Social here with Eddie Hearn. We just got done with the White Brown Final Press Conference. Not a lot of spice on that one, but I mean, still somewhat got the job done. Yeah, I mean, I know you guys want them to sort of throw chairs at each other, but um, the talking's been done. You know, there's been plenty said in the camp in the build up to this fight. They don't particularly like each other, but they can't be bothered with a couple of days to be parading. Uh, you know, elephants at the circus and start mm. playing up. Strictly business on Saturday night. It's a huge fight for the division. Like I said, outside of the championship fights, I see this as the biggest fight out there mm. in the heavyweight division. Dillian White's number one with the WBC. He's top five in virtually all the other governing bodies. Lucas Brown, former WBA regular champion. So it's, it's a big night and a very important fight for the career of Dillian White. A lot of big faces here. Bruce Buffer, Ricky Hatton and so forth. Um, you kind of get that feel that you know, this is really starting to yeah. happen. Like we got a lot of stuff happening yeah, in the coming I mean, coming days. Listen, this fight's live on HBO as well, which is brilliant for Dillian White. Um, you know, it's going to give him exposure in, in America as well. And obviously, America will get to see again what we're doing over here, which is impressive. Leading up to, of course, Joshua Parker next week, seventy-eight thousand at the Millennium Stadium. So, you know, it's a great time for British boxing. It'll be a great crowd here on Saturday night, and it's a big card as well. You know, two brilliant British title fights. Um, also, Derek Chisora, Jamie Cox, Anthony Fowler. Um, you know, it's. it's, it's a great night of boxing. Mm. Um, Dana White. Mm -hmm. Oh, my mate, yeah. yeah. <laughs> more time I said to Gareth, you called me murders with this, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, obviously, I gotta ask. Yeah, multi million yeah. dollar offers, yeah. apparently, no, uh, coming, yet, coming no, your yeah, way, yeah. coming, coming your way, way, potentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you're gonna meet up with Mr. I White next I mean, week? Yeah, or? I think Joshua was asked it on the media call last night, and he said, you know, he's happy for Dana to meet me and, you know, talk through it. Um, I'm not the kind of promoter that, you know, doesn't listen to ideas and opportunities. Anthony talks to everybody because he just loves to gain knowledge and info. Um, we've got a plan, me and Anthony, moving forward, certainly for the next three years, but I think hopefully for the, the rest mm. of his career because I've had him from the debut and he trusts me and we trust him and we've done a great job and I would be more than happy to meet Dana White just out of uh, interest, really. Yeah, like, not, what, not just what, what do you think he's going to bring to the table? Nothing. I think you know the UFC is in a bit of a weak position at the moment with obviously they're struggling on their TV deal and they need to make noise and I don't know whether the story's a plant or you know just for some exposure or but at the same time if Dana White wanted to get into boxing of course you're going to want to make Anthony Joshua an offer Every, people have already made Anthony Joshua offers you know not just me obviously but loads of people so it doesn't come as a surprise um, I know he's not doing anything in boxing at the moment but he's still a very good promoter he's a good business head so you know we work with all promoters so um, the numbers are a bit small if his career goes the way we expect it to go, they're very small. Mm. So, um, but again, you know, it's all about the focus is on winning on March 31st, hopefully getting a wilder fight done, and you know, we'll, we'll see. Mm. I, I think um, there's lots going on behind the scenes in terms of who you meet and who you talk to, and partnerships and broadcasters and sponsors. And so, um, more, more than happy, he's coming to Cardiff anyway because the, the um, stadium have invited him. We look forward to seeing him there. And, you know. mm. um, Deontay Wilder, you've uh, you've made some comments that you're in talks with their people on almost on a daily basis, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, I, 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 talk, I talk to their people on a daily basis, uh, the people that we're negotiating with now. So it's very, that's the route that I've taken because it's very straightforward for me to do that. You know, these are people that I deal with. This is Lewis de Cubas with our Heyman. I've done 100 fights with, you know, probably in three years, you know. Maybe not 100, but a lot of fights. And we're on the same wavelength. You know, we can get deals done very quickly. We did the Charles Martin deal together for, for Anthony Joshua. You know, we've done so many other fights together. We're Errol Spence deal, you know, non-stop. So we feel that we can make this fight very easily and very quickly. So August. I think, two, let's say 2018. But the one thing that I'm reluctant to talk about is... is um, we got a massive fight next Saturday. Like for me, arguably the toughest fight of Joshua's career so far. So nothing matters unless he wins. So of course the natural progression fight is Wilder for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. So let's get Saturday one, and then we can move forward. Um, let's talk about that. So earlier today, 
David Higgins and Kevin Barry held mm -hmm. a press event mm -hmm. uh, outside the Park Plaza Hotel, mm -hmm. and they reveal, revealed that. But what were they doing outside? I don't know, man. It was cold. Yeah, it, was know, cold. Yeah. it was cold. It was cold. It's a bit of a strange <laughs> room, but anyway, they're real anyway. ones tomorrow, isn't it? Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so apparently, both elbows, yeah. surgeries. Yeah. Were, were, were you aware of that during negotiations? No, I've noticed him looking a lot better in training <laughs> this time around, <laughs> uh, and looking a lot better physically. So it's not great news for us because clearly he's been carrying injuries, and now he's firing on all cylinders. It's great news for the fans, um, and I knew they're going to get a great fight, and they will get a great fight, but um, I'm glad he's 100% because there'll be no excuses in the fight and when it's said and done. And you know, I know, I get on well with David Higgins. David Higgins is a good operator, but we've been having plenty. Of, he, he believes that Joshua's getting knocked out in this fight. And I believe Parker's getting knocked out in this fight. I believe he questioned Joshua's mental strength today. Yeah, he does. He does that a lot. He also questions his chin. But when he comes face to face, I hope David Higgins will say this at the final press conference. Because last time I asked him to say what he says behind the scenes, and he won't say it. You know, me and him have banter non-stop. You know, uh, he said he might message me and say, "You won't be laughing when your boy's knocked out." You know, and I told AJ about that. And AJ, you know, he's got a bit between his teeth as well. I'm looking forward to next Tuesday because I want to see, I want to see Higgins, and I want to see Parker. I want to see them tell Joshua up on that stage. You think they'll do? It. No. They might do. If I, if will, I, will you put them on I've the spot? Go like I'm going to go to them because I want to add spice to this fight. Joshua wants spice to this fight. You know, he wants. I'll say he doesn't like Parker, but Parker said a lot of stuff that he heard, you know, mm. and he wants to hear it. He do not want to see it on a video. He wants to look into his eyes and say it to his face. So hopefully we get that on Saturday. Um, how do you know? Had you known about the elbows, the injuries, mm -hmm. how would that have, how would have that affected the talks before you signed the papers? Nothing really. Nothing. I mean, they were, I think that November was that happened. So we were negotiating in December, at the end of December. So obviously they they planned out when would be best to fight. They said they were available to fight from early March. So they were very happy with the recovery, and he looks great. They're talking about, you know, he wasn't able to throw a double jab and he was in terrible pain in the Huey Fury fight. Probably gives us some explanation down to the performance. Um, but we know in this fight, as we expected, a 100% Josie Parker. Yeah. And by the way, Josie Parker is a very proud man who has New Zealand and Samoa completely behind him and a guy that will fight till the very, very finish. And that is why I believe this is a really tough fight for Anthony Joshua. Mm. Finally, um, i got to ask you because yeah. I know you have an opinion. opinion. All right. Tyson Fury. Oh, you can't ask me about that. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 25 title defenses, yeah. the Joe Lewis record. He yeah. says he's going to break that, set a yeah. new record. Thoughts? Um, I want to see him back. You know, I want to see him back. I want to see him fighting good fights and the fights that he talks about fighting. And, um, you know, we got a plan for Anthony Joshua for six, eight, ten years. We need to fight everybody, you know, and we need more the merrier. The more Tyson Furies there are, the more Dillian Whites there are, Lucas Browns, Jarrell Millers, Deontay Wilders, Luis Ortiz, the better because we need to line up these defences over a period of time. So we, as in myself and AJ, can't wait for Fury to come back. We want to make that fight so bad. So hopefully we'll see him back soon.